my life completely changed. Um, you know, sometimes you come to forks in the road. So I started feeling better. I became normal. Um, I went out on the speaking tours. I spoke at the launch of our drug. So I spoke at Dr. Robos's cancer center. She, uh, she was going to talk about the progress in AML treatment and I was, I guess, the example. So I'm feeling good. Um, I feel about on the fence between AML as part of my life and trying to ignore it at times, which is how we handle it. It's probably gonna be here for, it's gonna be here forever unless there's some miracle happens, but I've been the beneficiary of, of uh, two miracles so far. And uh, one is my first drug and now is my second drug. So um, I'm very fortunate and I count my blessings. I think you bring up actually um, something about yourself that the audience may not know. So you went into remission and you did well. And, and what remission means is actually reducing the leukemic burden in the bone marrow such that normal recovery of more than a thousand infection fighting white cells and more than a hundred thousand platelets can come back so that your peripheral blood has normal blood counts. But there are fewer than 5% detectable blast cells under the microscope. I would argue that when you were hanging out in remission and we were, you know, we were speaking and you were talking um, to other patients and on tour or nobody could even tell you had AML. I mean, that was the great part is that people knew we met because we were standing next to each other, but you didn't look anything like a patient and that was fantastic. But you did relapse from this disease. And that is something that unfortunately is a terrible reality about AML which is that remission is not the same as cure. And actually the number of patients over 60 worldwide with AML who are cured without any evidence of disease at five years after the initial diagnosis is still a very small number. So on the one hand, we have had absolutely enormous and thrilling progress. And I have to tell you the last three years of being an AML doctor have been way better than the, the 20 before. So we are making incredible progress, but I, I want my career to be done. I want the disease to be done and cured and finished and no more patients to treat. And that's not where we are. There are plenty of patients who unfortunately do relapse even after being in complete remission, which is so hard for people to understand that, but doc, you told me my bone marrow looks great. There are no blast cells. My counts are normal. How is that possible? Where did these leukemia cells come from? Well, they can and they do hide and they do come back and yours did come back. And you actually, miracle number two, was that there was another drug which had been working its way through the investigational pipeline and already showing significant pro uh, uh, progress. You were not a happy man when we were discussing the relapse. You, I think, were welling up with a lot of the initial um, fear and uncertainty, and many of those original and unwelcome feelings were coming back as we were talking about relapse. But we actually popped you back into remission with another novel therapy that had not been available at the time of your original diagnosis. So the two hit wonder now back in remission and continuing to take ongoing therapy, which I think is another extraordinary aspect of the evolution of AML care, which is that there are increasing evidence to support the application for some patients at least of ongoing cycles of therapy, even beyond being in remission. And this is something where many years ago, it was thought to be, you get your chemo, you're done, and then you wait and see what happens. And some patients would be cured and the majority would relapse. But now there's actually a lot of work ongoing for the application for some patients of ongoing cycles of therapy, which are administered in remission, hopefully on an outpatient basis, but with the goal of extending remission and hopefully preventing leukemic cells from coming back. And I believe, unless you've changed in the last hour before this interview, that that is where we continue to be with you and that you are on ongoing therapy with the second regimen that we put you on to get you back into remission. That is that is exactly what I'm on, and uh, 
you, your recollection about me is amazing because you have thousands of patients, but we, in April of 2019, we did have, we did have a meeting that felt like a repeat. It felt like a repeat of my visit to the cancer center in Connecticut, because here we go again, down the, uh, the unknown uh, path. Um, but I was very fortunate something came up and now I am getting, I'm getting Dr. Robos' treatment out here at our local cancer center. So um, I'm very fortunate. I don't get any treatment for five or six weeks. And then I go in for a, a few days and I take a pill and I'm still here. So I, I'm getting spoiled here by the miracles <laughs> of medical progress. Well, I think it's, um, it's a new world of thinking about AML. And I can tell you even, I'm not that old yet. And I think at the beginning of my career, there was so much nihilism about patients in their 60s, 70s, 80s with AML. We had had so many years without a breakthrough. There were so much suffering with ongoing therapy and not that much benefit. And there were so many patients who were having just a few months of survival with a lot of misery. And things are better now. And I think that your experience in particular um, should be very, very encouraging for newly diagnosed AML patients to seek expertise, get their disease categorized. What is the biology of my disease? What are my chromosomes? What mutations do I have? And to really try to get plugged into as close to the cutting edge as you can get. And even in the event of a relapse, and you know, it's so hard for us to, I mean, you and I were so close at that point. And I know exactly what your, your the, the look on your face when we were talking about that. Yeah, it was a long time ago, but I do remember that. And I was thrilled to have something else to offer you. And while I don't think I could ever tell you on the first day that don't worry about it, I don't say things like that because there was a lot to worry about. Both of us, I think were thrilled thrilled to have you back um, in remission and to have something new to do and to have that happen with really, really excellent maintenance of your energy level and you're running around and doing things with your family and I get to hear about your family. So I would love the, the audience to see that it's worth the fight. And I think you are the perfect, perfect exhibit A to prove that it's worth the fight. Again, I don't have no know what I can say beyond I count my blessings the six years. Uh, Dr. Robos knows this. After I survived one year, I had my first birthday party, uh, yep. then our second. We had about 40 people just come around from the neighborhood and friends, and, and they wanted to hear the story. I thought the first birthday party was some something, but they came for years. And now, of course, with COVID, uh, we celebrate just quietly, but still just as happy. I think as a parting comment, um, let's talk for a second about COVID. COVID has not made anything easier or better, that's for sure. But I think that um, the management of uh, AML is still treat the treatable, cure the curable. Um, there are certainly both regional and institutional, and depending on where you are in the world, there are changes in, in aspects of the care that are related to the pandemic and whether or not there are cases surging in your area. But AML doesn't get put on the back burner and it doesn't wait for COVID. So if one is feeling unwell, get checked out and proceed with whatever the absolutely best path of care would be prior to COVID, that's what you're gonna go on now. And I think that most of the major AML centers um, and even many of the um, community practices have been able to, um, uh, to adapt to the issues related to the pandemic and to continue to offer patients the absolutely best treatment that they can get um, for their AML with all possible precautions taken to, to make sure that, that COVID doesn't get in the way of the best possible AML treatment. I think that, um, again, I, I find it very hard to ever talk about advantages of COVID because it has not been anybody's favorite year. In fact, it's been 
pretty horrendous one. But I do think that there are aspects of telemedicine and virtual visits and collaboration between doctors that have actually been enhanced and hopefully those enhancements will stay so that patients can feel very connected to experts who might not be located anywhere near where they live. And I hope that patients will take advantage of this opportunity to make sure that their follow-up can be optimized and that they can stay in remission for as long as possible.